Okay. I can zoom in. Maybe again, you got me in it? I zoomed in. Okay. Do you have audio on or? No. Yeah, it's going to get what we're saying. Okay, good. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, let me just remember what this. Yeah, th this is a good start. It's summer radiance and uh, it's really inspiring because if, if you've been in the uh, uh, North Africa and Southern France, a lot of times that's really what things look like. So. music and sight, synesthesia, the combination of what one sees and what one hears. And uh, this is one of these pieces, inspired by music and then try, trying to make a, uh, a visual uh, interpretation of music. This is called Moroccan Light, and I'm tremendously affected by it. And uh, it really came to me living in Bavaria, seeing the sky change uh, repeatedly all day long. And this is one of those pieces that uh, I, uh, I've done. Next to it, this, this typifies this, uh, the concept of radiance, to really radiate and bring to life a visual image. And this, this piece comes from my having met uh, Hundertwasser in uh, 1971, uh, no, 19, uh, 1967 in uh, Salzburg, Austria. He painted some similarly here and uh, uh, I took off on, on Hundertwasser and this piece is actually a self-portrait and it evolved looks a little bit like Shakespeare and of course Tito my associate did the frame and it's so complimentary so it's, it's out of this world This is yet another landscape with radiance, just totally evoking radiance, movement, color, synesthesia. I'll let this one, I'll let this one speak for itself. Uh, it just uh, brings life. And of course, in this gallery, I, I'd never seen my work in this light, in this setting and it really enhances what I do in my studio. And this, this is just a, a lovely piece, what do we call it? Uh, art, artistic passion. And you know, just look at it for a while and you'll really get this tremendous feeling. And again, you have the uh, synesthesia it almost is like a symphony created here. Oh, oh yeah, this came out of my workshop. It's a random uh, display of color. And uh, what do we call it? Uh, yeah, the beginning. It's just lovely how the, the light purple blends in with the greens and the blue and the yellows, it, it, it gives me a thrill. I, I hate to be so egotistical, but I guess one's got to be occasional. 
again, this is a, a landscape and uh, it uh, evokes that feeling of radiance, which I often refer to Thomas Aquinas, who looked at art as the wholeness of it, the, the wholeness of a piece, the integrity of a piece, and the radiance. And that was new to me a couple of years ago, but wow, did it resonate because I feel that radiance and try to express it. The next two pieces go back to 2003. They're done on IKEA carpets. Uh, I, I wanted something to have a certain consistency and you can see the weaving on, on the carpets and it was just a thrill to paint on it. I didn't know what would come out of it. I'd never seen it done before, but uh, uh, it was a thrill to bring those carpets alive. The next one is one of the best pieces because that, the, I just love the blend of color. And it works over time. Obviously, you can work for four or five days on something, you come back to it, and then suddenly you see a direction and you enhance it. And this is a really fine example of that. And it was a pleasure creating it. This is a uh, burlap bag on a, uh, a box. And the material inspires and creates the uh, essence of things. Uh, so it's, a lot of it is this random idea. You get uh, something evolves randomly. I didn't sketch anything or plan it or write a notebook about it, but it just came out. And this again is a, uh, a bright light on a dark day. And this, of course, is totally, you could, uh, you could look at it as expression or fun. Uh, it's just an exciting piece. You have some human uh, aspects, the mouth, the eye. You have a character here. You have a character here. Uh, again, just looking at it for me, uh, brings me a great deal of pleasure. It was fun making it, and the result was good. And this, this was a, a random piece, started out randomly, and I'm so pleased with it because it's just beauty. And the essence of that, through all the uh, struggles of life, the uh, so on and so forth, just to see a shot of what I call absolute beauty is a thrill. This is a, a violin case. Uh, I picked up a used violin in a used case out in Lambertville and brought it home, took the uh, case apart and uh, uh, created a, an exciting scene on it. This again is another landscape. This, a lot of times you drive in a, uh, it's getting dark, sun is setting, everything takes on a different shade. This is subdued. It doesn't have the evocative radiance that some of the other pieces have, but it's a mood of a late afternoon, let's say maybe five, six o'clock, sun has, is going down over the mountain and you're seeing the onset of evening. Here is another violin case pure thrill to work on it. Uh, and here, this is the last piece of the show. It's uh, just an expression that has all those qualities. It has a wholeness, it has a certain integrity. You have a, a yellow line that brings it together, and then you have the radiance. So it's a thrill. And then one, I'll leave with one uh, thing. Over my uh, studio, I have a sign that says, enter here, not to interpret reality, but to compete with it. So, uh, challenging nature. Nature gives us enough of uh, good and bad, so I, I wanted to ch uh, chime in with my, my world. Oh, okay. And I forgot. Uh, here we have uh, a sculpture called Love's Labor. 
here you have two figures bound together and they seem to be enjoying their life together. Love's labor. Uh, this is made from shipping paper. And I have rods in here and I create the figure. And it, it was a thrill to uh, come up with this and uh, mount it on two springs. These are automobile springs. And uh, put them together. So this is Love's labor. I have another one which is very interesting. It's down in uh, uh, Ring File Dermatology on Locust Street in Philadelphia. It sits in the window. And it's to a figure with the hands up like this. And in Philadelphia or any American city, it might mean hands up, don't shoot. But in West Africa, in Senegal and Ghana and so forth, when you put your hands up like this, it means, hi, I'm happy to see you. Nice to see you. Have a good day. So it's a, a two different cultures. One, uh, a certain sculpture with the hands up, the figure with the head. And in one culture, it means hands up, don't shoot. In another culture, it means uh, I'm happy to see you. So, okay. I so appreciate it. Oh. I was 13 and 14 years of when, when I was 13 and 14 years of age, I sculpted in Philadelphia with a sculptor from the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts by the name of Joe Greenberg. And my father had two friends. One was a gynecologist, the other was an entoma, uh, endocrinologist. Uh, these men were in their early 70s. My father was in his late 60s. So I had the inspiration of these guys who were real serious people, uh, particularly uh, the doctor, the gynecologist, was one of the best in, in uh, Philadelphia. But at any rate, in learning, I was influenced by Philadelphia because Philadelphia has the greatest <coughs> Rodin exhibit outside of Paris. And so this is a hand which was part of a sculpture that I created with the inspiration of these guys uh, who were very serious about their sculpting and my exposure to Rodin and Joe Greenberg, who was a delightful guy and uh, I had to go, but that was at age 13, 14. And so that set me in a pattern. Though I didn't study uh, art, I uh, always had it within me and as I grew older, I began painting and uh, that occupies a tremendous amount of my time and thinking. So, thank you. Okay. All right.